Well guys, specifications for NVIDIA's upcoming GeForce RTX 3050 Ti and GeForce RTX 3050 graphics cards have leaked out along with their first benchmarks. The specifications and benchmarks were leaked within the Geekbench database and tested on unreleased laptops featuring the Intel Tiger Lake H processors. Now, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 series would include both the TI and the non-TI variants, and the two GPUs were spotted at our and the two GPUs that were spotted are laptop variants, but we have seen that laptop and peer variants feature the same core specifications as their desktop variants, as long as you don't go past the 26 or 3060 rather past 3060. Now the GeForce RTX 3050 series will also be utilizing the Ampere GA107 GPU which has yet to make an appearance on desktop or laptop segments. Now the GPU have shown up in Samsung laptops featuring Tiger Lake H which is a 45 watt CPU, namely the Core i7-11800H and the Core i5-11400H. Now as far as specifications go, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti features 20 SMs or 2560 CUDA cores. Now this should be the full fat GA107 GPU configuration and it was running with a maximum clock of 1.03 GHz and features 4 GB of GDDR6 memory running across a 128 bus interface. Now Nvidia is likely to feature 12 gigabits per second memory module so we can expect a bandwidth of around 192 gigabytes per second. Now the GPU should have a TGP of sub 100 watts and the GeForce RTX 3050 non-TI features 16 SMs for 2048 CUDA cores. Now the GPU was running at a maximum frequency of 1.06 gigahertz and these are most likely the laptop tuned clocks we can expect higher in the desktop parts which will hit the retail segment in the coming months. Now as for performance in OpenCL, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti is about as fast as an RX 5600 XT and the GTX 1080 Ti. Now the GeForce RTX 3050 is about as fast as the GTX 1080 and the non-TI variants also slightly faster than the GTX 1650 Super, which is what it replaces at the time of launch. Also, this is just OpenCL performance and the Ampere architectures offer a huge increase in performance in OpenCL and Vulkan APIs, so average performance in DX, well, either DirectX 11 or DX12 titles would be slightly lower. The other key features is that the GeForce RTX 3050 Ti is listed as an RTX variant. Now previously, ray tracing was kept exclusively to the 60 series graphics cards and above. Well, the 2060, not the 1660. I mean, eventually you could enable it on there, but the full RTX suite, so DLSS and such. So now we can get ray tracing on entry level cards too. However, the pricing of the GPU will be higher than the RTX 3050 Ti expected to be around 229 to 279, while the RTX 3050 will cost slightly below that $200 US price range. Now it seems like neither Nvidia nor AMD will have a decent sub $150 US solution this generation, but that remains to be seen. Now, as far as TGP goes, the GeForce RTX 3050 Ti is expected to feature a 60 watt design and expected to make use of that GA107 GPU. Now Intel's Tiger Lake H and Nvidia's GeForce RTX 30 series mobility GPU laptops are going to start around $999 US and we expect them to be quite popular amongst mainstream gamers who require portable and budget friendly gaming solutions. One last thing I want to mention about those 3050 Ti's and 3050's being RTX cards, ray tracing isn't the real boom. The real kicker for these cards is DLSS support. Be interesting to see how they do when they hit the shelves. All right, guys, I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you liked what you saw here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. Hit the bell notification so that we don't miss you in the future. And if you want to catch out something you may have missed, hit up the links over here on this side. And we'll catch you in the next one.